<laughs> During the break, I heard Mark Wills and Tia Goins doing a duet. What's that all about? It's a it's a Tia Goins and Mark Wills duet. It's her record. Uh, yeah. And she she called me uh, one day and said, "Hey, would you be interested in singing a song with me?" And uh, she knows I'm a huge Keith Whitley fan. And uh, and so I was honored to go in. And, and the funny thing is, is we actually recorded the song mm -hmm. in the same studio that Whitley recorded the studio yeah. recorded in yeah. in, in the mm -hmm. studio yeah. over there. Sound Emporium. Uh, I used to be Garth Fundus's place, Sound yeah. Emporium, yeah. which is where I recorded the Wish You Were Here album, which had Wish You Were Here and I Do and, and Don't Laugh and all those on them. Well, go back to that studio. It's lucky. Yeah. For I you. know, man. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's been a good one in my, uh, in my past. So Keith, Keith wrote this. Uh, no, Keith recorded this song, and uh, I've always loved the song. And we were trying to come up with some duet ideas that were not your run-of-the-mill duet stuff. And uh, when this song came up, I was like, well, it is kind of told from two different points of view. So I think if we did it you know, right, we could tell the story and make it a duet. And it's a really fun song. And we've, we've done it on the Opry, we've done it on the cruise. And so, uh, yeah, we decided to put it on the record and it was a lot of fun. Does anybody know how many records Keith Whitley made during his mm -hmm. lifetime? I just wonder you how know, many. You uh, know, he was a really, really close uh, friend of mine. Uh, when he died, Jack McFadden was his man. And Jack called me up that morning, and uh, which wasn't unusual that we talk on the phone. And he said, uh, Keith's dead. And I said, oh, come on, man. And he said, no, Keith, they found Keith dead. And uh, so I started crying. I couldn't believe it because we had just done a show, and we were scheduled to do more shows that next week. And Jack said, can I send uh, the news people to your house? He said, I can't face them and so they all came over to my house and I was in pretty bad shape too but Keith had just had five number ones in a row right. and he would have been as big a star probably as anybody because you know it's, it, he left such a legacy but he didn't do that many albums I think he only recorded uh, to, to the best of my knowledge four three or four yeah, uh, maybe three I don't um, know but yeah, he and was. And they on, just finished up the "I Wonder Do You Think of Me" album, um, I yeah. believe, and and that was and it, wasn't that the first single that they released yep. right after, after he, he passed, passed away. away? Mm -hmm. Yeah, was, I think Jamie so. Jamie was telling Jamie Johnson told me that before he sang that, he said that song had gone to number one, or was that number one when Keith died? Yeah. And you know, he had that duet with Lori right. that right. came out after he died. Right. right. Yeah. Till uh, Terry comes across the road, which yeah. was, and they which won the CMA the, award on yep. that. Cause it was funny, cause Tanya Tucker and I were up for that same award that year for a duet that we had done. Wow! But uh, well, were there any old? Of course, Keith got started uh, with JD yeah. Crow and all the the bluegrass and Eastern stuff from back there. Are there some old records of that, like oh, Young I Keith? Oh, I bet so. Records? We'd have to ask Skaggs, but I would. Uh, oh, I'm sure there's a bunch I of that. So. I, I thought yeah. you meant just his solo stuff. Well, no, stuff. I did, but then yeah. I got but, to thinking. Yeah, right. Just yesterday, I was listening to Live in Japan. You know, I mean, yeah. his bluegrass. That's a great album. Right. Really yeah, great album. Think, that, all that bluegrass stuff. I think J.D. Crow really encouraged Keith because Keith used to play in J.D. Crow's band. That's where I came in contact with, with Keith's voice. I think Crow, if I got the story right, brought him to town and put up some money and helped facilitate mm -hmm. and cut a country demo that got him his record deal that I think was released later on. So RC, it was an, mm -hmm. the RCA, it was an RCA yeah. deal. And, the, and the, to, to my knowledge, I mean, like nothing happened with the first record. Yeah. They, they were, it was LA to Miami, I believe. And they had Miami, Miami and a couple of those, but they weren't really big hits. And then he went in and, and you know, yeah. it seemed like the second record or maybe possibly the beginning of the third album yeah. is what really I kicked think it the one I'm here. talking about is even before Miami, Miami, there's like some, like eight songs or something right. that was recorded before all of that. He's almost a, a cult figure yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. now. So many young artists will reference him as, as their influence and that they look up to him without him having this large body of work. But what he did was... Paul, Paul Overstreet, you know, he wrote one of the biggest hits for Keith. I, which one was that, Paul? I'm sorry. When You Say Nothing at All. Oh, gosh, oh, I wow. guess so. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That'll be another She Loves My Willie someday. 
it'll, it'll rival it. He did some, <laughs> didn't he do some <laughs> stuff? With, he did play with Ralph Stanley too. Oh, yeah. Yes, he did yeah. before oh, Crow. Right, yeah. I know when you go to um, if y'all, I don't, I don't know if y'all have ever been to Ralph Stanley's Bluegrass Festival, but it's, it takes a lot to get there. It's a, a very tip top of a mountain, and you risk your life the whole way getting there. But uh, at the bottom of a hill, there's a stage, and um, when we were out there, they said that. Keith and Ricky Skaggs helped me build that. Build a stage, yeah, the original cool. stage. Hey, Bill, I know you probably can't see this, but uh, you might be able to. <laughs> I'm going to show you something. You'll love this now. Somebody sent me this. Check this out, man. We were all up for the uh, young, the first, uh, male singer of the year, the new Tommy male singer. Vocalist. And it's Marty Stewart and Keith and me and Billy Burnett and Randy. And Randy won that year. Man. Ain't that a cool yeah. picture? I hope, I hope the camera somewhere can get a picture oh, of that man. black and white. Wow. I'm glad you told me that was you. I don't think I would have known Oh, that. man, we were kids back then. Are you in the and middle? Keith, and Keith's got a cigarette in his hand. He always had a cigarette, man. He's... With that voice, yep. he had a cigarette. Yeah. Wow. And so that was about what? Was that 86? Probably. Randy yeah, really probably so. Came on this in Billy Burnett. My goodness. Ain't that pretty neat, Look, isn't look it? at T. Graham. Oh, Did so, you see yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> Randy in a tuck. Oh, heart throb there. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank what you for sharing that, What was the song you had out then, T? Do what? What was the song you had out then? Can you remember? Uh, I tell it like it used to be, probably, or Hell and High Water. Oh, no. There's someone we ought to show right there. <laughs> yeah. Then and now. You then better get now. your iPad back right now. I'm afraid now. what else we might find on there. Yeah. We better this is a totally different TV show if you don't get that back. <laughs> yeah. 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 T, are you at Marty's Yeah, I'm at Marty's. Yeah. 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 Yeah.